Let me ask you specifically, as a member of the Senate Intelligence Committee, have you seen any evidence up till now that the Obama administration wiretapped Donald Trump or anyone else in Trump Tower during the campaign? I've, I've seen no evidence of the allegations we've seen in the media, Chris, um, whether that's a, a potential FISA court application or a denial of that application or a resubmission of an application or surveillance for that matter. That doesn't mean that none of these things happened. It simply means I haven't seen that yet, as Speaker Ryan said in the lead-in to our conversation here. Um, but. I would not want to speculate about media reports based on anonymous sources. I, I would prefer to deal in facts. I, I want to, let me ask you to deal in facts and follow up on something that you mentioned in passing, because the government would need a court order to engage in this kind of wiretapping, and they would need to show probable cause, either that a crime had been committed or that somebody was acting as a foreign agent. Uh, do you know whether or not there has been such a court order, and if not, are you going to try to find out? I don't know, Chris. Are you going to try to find out? I think that think all these matters will be a part of our inquiry. I know you're being careful, and I know I'm putting it in a tough spot, but, but I, I do have to ask you, because this is something that is on the minds of Americans, and they're trying to understand what is going on in this country. And yes, you have a role as a member of the Senate Intelligence Committee. You also have a, a role as a senator and as a leader in this country, and people are pretty confused right now. When you see this tweet that we saw this weekend from President Trump, that former President Obama tapped his phones, he compares it to Watergate and calls Mr. Obama a bad or a sick guy. I'm not asking you as a member of the Senate Intelligence Committee. I'm asking you as a U.S. Senator and a U.S. leader. What's your reaction? Well, I, I try not to parse and, uh, and review every one of President Obama's uh, or President Trump's tweets, Chris. So, you know, I, I prefer to focus on things like his speech to Congress the other night, where he laid out in an hour-long speech a very careful plan of action. I, I think that's a better guide to what, what he's thinking and where he wants to take the country, just like his appointments to his cabinet and the policies he's pursuing. But, but you have folks back in Arkansas in your state, and th this is a pretty serious charge. Yeah. What, what would you say to them about, about an allegation by one president that a former president wiretapped him during the campaign. You know, Chris, I was actually in Heber Springs yesterday morning. We had a town hall with over 450 Arkansans. And for almost an hour and a half, got a lot of questions. I only got one question about this. Almost all the questions were about health care and the harms that Obamacare caused or immigration and the failure to enforce our immigration laws under President Obama's tenure or, or rebuilding a military to face the challenges we face or uh, to include from Russia. Uh, this is this kind of topic is not going to bring, do much to bring those people comfort that we're going to fix their health care system or enforce our immigration laws. I think that town hall is a pretty good indication of where most Americans' minds are right now. You say that you don't pay a lot of attention to Donald Trump's tweets. Why not? <laughs> I think what, I mean, I, I think Twitter is an important medium that politicians can use to communicate, just like FDR started using radio addresses, just like President Obama changed the radio address to a weekly YouTube address, but, but ultimately a better guide for an elected official's actions are their prepared, deliberate speech, like the President gave to Congress the other night, which is well-crafted and well-delivered, and especially the policies they've pursued. And for six weeks now, uh, President Obama has appointed members to his cabinet. You're President, you keep saying Obama. <laughs> President Trump has appointed members to, to his cabinet, and, and they've made deliberate statements that have been tougher on Russia than anything President Obama ever did. If you want to know what a pro-Russia policy would look like, Chris, here are some elements of it. You'd slash defense spending. You'd slow down our nuclear modernization. You'd roll back missile defense systems. You would enter a one-sided nuclear arms control agreement. And you'd try to do everything you could to stop oil and gas production. That was Barack Obama's policy for eight years. That's not Donald Trump's policy. None of those things are good for Russia that Donald Trump has proposed to do to roll back some of those Obama-era policies. I just want to, and I'm sure some people are saying enough already, but I do want to follow up one more time. There is the possibility, as you're saying, you're going to investigate it, that it's true. There's also the possibility that it isn't true and that the president just flew off the handle. That would be pretty troubling, wouldn't it, the idea that a president would make a charge this explosive about another president without any evidence? Well, all presidents are, are human, Chris, and if a lot of the allegations in the media are false, and I can tell you, based on things I do know, that there are many inaccurate reports that have circulated in the media 
over the last several months. Uh, it's understandable that Donald Trump will be frustrated at the leaks of inaccurate information, which also have the potential to reveal capabilities of the United States that we don't want our adversaries to know. Okay. Uh, we've talked enough about the tweets. Let's step back and look at the big picture, because the Senate Intelligence Committee has been investigating this whole issue for some period of time. And, uh, and again, I'm only asking you what you know. Have you seen any evidence so far in this investigation hard evidence of collusion between what I will call Trump world and Russia or Russian agents to interfere with the election. No, Chris, I've seen no evidence. Uh, and again, I would just say that media reports have gotten pretty far over their skis on this. Maybe the most explosive story came from the New York Times about three weeks ago, claiming that several known Trump, Trump associates were being investigated uh, for repeated and extensive contacts with Russian intelligence officials. And as I cautioned Arkansans this weekend, I would say to your viewers, you should not trust media sources or media reports based on anonymous sources. The one thing you can trust in those articles is the caveats that undermine the headlines and the lead paragraphs. And in that very New York Times story, the third paragraph said there was no evidence so far of any such cooperation. And 